tensions ratcheting up along Israel's northern border with Lebanon. The Israeli military says that it is on, quote, very high alert in that region and that it will respond to any event there today and in the days to come. Now, that warning given just before the chief of Lebanese militant group Hezbollah, Hassan Nasrallah, is scheduled to deliver a speech. It will be his first since the war exploded. And many observers say that the closely watched address could provide clues on Hezbollah's next move in this conflict, stoking fears of a possible regional escalation. Across border attacks have increased in the past few days. Israel says that it launched a broad attack on several Hezbollah targets after the group announced multiple strikes of its own on Israeli army positions. Now, those strikes include Hezbollah's first use of explosive drones. More than 70 people have died in the Lebanese side and close to 10 in Israel since the conflict began. For more, Mia Alberti joins us. She's live for us from Beirut. Mia, an apparent uptick in tensions between both sides in the past week. What ha some have described as a possible prelude to this upcoming speech by the Hezbollah chief, what can we expect from that is in just about half an hour's time from now? Look, the big question is that we do not know what Hassan Nasrallah will be saying in just half an hour in his televised speech that was announced earlier this week. According to Hezbollah, officially, he will be talking about the members of Hezbollah that have uh, died so far. Those are 50 people that have been killed by Israeli forces since October 7th when they started these uh, exchanges of fire with Israel in that southern uh, border. So we do not know exactly besides that what he will be talking about, but here are the options. He might not announce anything. He might just talk about the martyrs and he might just, you know, say that they are going to continue the operations that we are seeing at the border. Um, that would be the least aggressive stance that we could see from Nasrallah. We can also see him uh, saying that they are already in a conflict with Israel, that what is happening in the border uh, is more than deterrence. It's actually, you know, another chapter of conflict. Or we can actually see him, and this is the biggest fear, especially here in Lebanon, announce a, a, a proper new war front being opened from here, from southern Lebanon, against Israel and start an all-out offensive against Israel with a clear intention to, you know, to cause casualties, to cause destruction, which is something that we haven't necessarily seen in the border yet. And also one thing that we could also expect uh, or that might happen, that Nasrallah might announce, is not just the um, entrance of Hezbollah here in Lebanon in this war with Israel, but as of this axis of resistance, as they call it. So we can see not only Hezbollah, but also the Shia uh, militias in Iraq. We saw the head of the Quds force in Iraq um, meeting with Nasrallah during this week. So they could join Syria, Yemen as well. So we could see either a larger a group of these so-called axis of resistance joining the war, announcing through Hezbollah that they are joining this war against Hezbollah, or against Israel, excuse me, or we could just see the continuation of the conflict. But either way, we can expect a very aggressive speech as it is uh, usual with Hassan Nasrallah. Mia, Lebanon is already wrapped up in its own economic, financial and political crisis. Can it even afford to get further involved in this conflict? Absolutely not. I mean, I spoke with the Minister of Economy uh, last week uh, about the, the government plan, the contingency plan that the government is putting into place. And he was, you know, drawing per parallelisms between what Lebanon was going through in 2006 during the last war with uh, between Hezbollah and Israel and now. And the situation is completely different. I mean, we they cannot increase their food stocks because um, because of the fear of uh, the distrust in investors in Lebanon. Uh, these companies are asking for payments in cash and in advance, something that the, the clients here cannot do. So they are having problems here in Lebanon, increasing their food stocks, fuel stocks, medicine shortages. Uh, we're also talking about a country that uh, doesn't have, uh, you know, the only way out at the moment is the Beirut airport, which was bombed in 2006. At that time, they had a way out through Syria that doesn't exist anymore. And Syria could also be joining this conflict. And even if it doesn't... Uh, 
that the Damascus airport is already out of service. And so we are talking about a country that is no, not only in a horrible situation to prepare itself for an emergency plan, but also it is already going, as you mentioned, through one of the worst uh, economic crises in modern times. And so, uh, you know, words of the Minister of Economy here in Lebanon, he told me that if something happens in Lebanon, um, even even if things stay as they are now, this could have this could send uh, Lebanon back into the dark ages, economically speaking. So you can see, and people are already feeling the the the, the, the burn here, losing their jobs, uh, starting to leave Lebanon. So even if the conflict stays here, stops here, the, the impacts on the economy are already major. Mia, thank you for that update. Mia Alberti, there reporting for us in Beirut.